privately guarded um, uh, area where soldiers actually are chosen because of their uh, Im immense loyalty to the North Korean regime. Mark Lowen. Scientists at a United Nations climate conference in Germany say global emissions of carbon dioxide are projected to rise in 2017 for the first time in four years. They say the main cause for the expected 2% increase is the greater use of coal in China. Our environment correspondent Matt McGrath is at the conference in Bonn. According to scientists, 2017 will be one of the three warmest years on record with the impacts of increasing heat felt right across the world. The key task for the 20,000 delegates and negotiators in Bonn is tackling the root causes of these rising temperatures, emissions of carbon dioxide. For decades, these rose strongly on the back of China's rapid economic expansion. But in 2014, and for the next two years, these emissions stalled. Scientists wondered if a global peak had been reached. However, today's figures show that levels of carbon are back on the rise. It's so urgent that peak emissions takes place and the emissions decreases very rapidly. It's absolutely urgent. People don't realize emissions need to uh, disappear essentially for the warming to stop. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to uh, develop the policies, the actions, the technology, and use them uh, so that our emissions decreases everywhere. Well, many delegates here have been surprised by the reported rise in CO2 emissions in 2017, partly attributed to the greater use of coal around the world. And while there's no clear science on the subject, many negotiators are linking that rise to the growth of extreme weather events all over the planet this year. For small island states from the Caribbean and elsewhere who have experienced what they see as climate-related devastation this year, the latest CO2 figures translate into a very real threat. What we do here is not esoteric, cerebral or academic. It is really to ensure that real lives are saved, livelihoods are maintained and sustained, and that we can minimize the negative impact of climate change on islands such as ours, which are on the front line of the fury of climate change. That view won't cut much ice with US President Donald Trump, who wants to leave the Paris Climate Pact. His advisers are in bond to promote what they call clean coal. But whether anyone here is prepared to listen to that message is doubtful. Matt McGrath, BBC News, Bonn. Now, globally, just three in ten scientists are women. UNESCO has compiled a report pinpointing where women thrive in this sector and where they're underrepresented. Let's take a look now at some regional averages of female researchers around the world. Women represent 39.9% in the Arab states. Throughout North America and Western Europe, women make up 32.2% of scientists. In East Asia and the Pacific, the figure shows female representation at 22.9%. But in some countries, female scientists are in the majority. Myanmar is top of the class, according to stats gathered by UNESCO, with more than 85% of the field represented by women. Let's get more on all this from the BBC Science and Environment reporter Helen Briggs. Helen, the Myanmar figure, 85%, is that a reliable number? Well, first of all, it is a very high figure. It really, really stands out. Um, but UNESCO, who provided this data, they did say that they thought that it was probably an overestimate. There's a number of reasons behind that. First of all, the data supplied was quite old. Also, in Myanmar, women, by and large, do all, most of the teaching. And some universities there, they don't have facilities for research and experiments, so it's more of a teaching job. Um, so women are overrepresented in that way. Um, but also, the wages for scientists are quite low, so it tends to be that men don't stay in that profession. If they have to provide for their families, um, they go on to do other things. So it's still very high certainly more than 50 percent and there's only really about a dozen countries where women outnumber men in the scientific workforce. I mean it's interesting isn't it because we the stereotype is that men find sciences and maths and tech easier and naturally gravitate towards it but I, but I also know my Indian family you know in India and Asia generally sciences is very prized as a degree and an area to go into as a work as for work. It is. If you look at the 50% above countries, some really interesting things stand out. So in Thailand, for example, it's 53.3%, big, 
push there to improve scientific literacy, but also really good role models. So there's a, um, a member of the Thai royal family who's a chemist, so she's a great role model for women. And then places like Tunisia, again, they're bucking the trend, 54%, a lot of women there with PhDs, even in male-dominated areas like science and, and computing. So does it seem that, that the situation is improving, or do we have no comparison here? Well, I think generally we've seen an improvement across the board, very, very mixed picture. The things that are coming out really are that women have always played a big role in science. They haven't always been valued for that. Things like role models, mentoring is improving the situation, um, but still a good way to go. And, and do we have any idea of dropout rates, for example, and you know, whether women perhaps graduate, start working and then you know, fall out once they have a family? But it's the same with many other careers, really. That, so women are making inroads into doing the degrees, doing postgrads, and, and going on to that. Once you get to the top of the, profess the profession, say professors, then you know it may be say one in ten of, of professors are women. So that's where the real work is to actually encourage women to stay in science and to get to these top roles. Helen Briggs, thanks very much for that update. Very interesting. You can reach me on Twitter at Geetha Gurumuthi. I'm back in a few minutes. Stay with us if you can. Hello there. We've got a lot of